KVAL Sports with Nick Krupke starts right now. All right, to the Springfield and Willamette girls met twice before this season. The Millers won both. The first by three points in December, the second by 22 in late January. The final tally tonight looked like they played with a peach basket. He wanted to go out on top. He said even during the Rose Bowl, during the game when they were trailing, he thought, if we lose this game, I'm certainly coming back. But now Michael becomes the eighth duck all time to forego that senior season and jump ahead. The running backs who did so, Ontario Smith and Jonathan Stewart had nice careers in the NFL. Not quite graduated yet. He can do that in the spring. So he's going to take a little bit of time off and certainly prepare for this as that draft coming up April 27th, NFL evaluations. Told to Michael about a third round pick. He says he's going to work and shoot for a second round. Well, Larry Scott yesterday, and even he kind of somewhat uh, agreed that this isn't necessarily the biggest matchup they would like as a new look conference now on display for everybody in the country across the U.S. of A tomorrow. It's UCLA in Oregon. The Ducks 10 and 2 still four touchdown favorites over the 6 and 6 UCLA Bruins. Always excited to come to Eugene. In fact, Kirk Herbstreit told me he's called his wife more than one time back in Tennessee and said one day they'd love to live here in Eugene, maybe Boise too, for that mountain fresh air. It is a privilege to have this game, but in talking to those guys, I kind of got the sense that they didn't think it was going to be that big of a game like games we've seen before when game day has come to town. And you know, last hour we talked about it kind of never fails. It might be doom and gloom and rain before and after, but the day of the races, and in this case, the night of the races, spring blooms. Uh, spring camp, five weeks. Mm -hmm. What's the bigger payoff for the coaches to get out here for the spring game or for the players to actually? Get out there and play a game. Yeah, that's a good question. After the hiring of Vin Lanana in 2005, Galen and the Ducks took flight nationally, even making Rupp a household name across the country. Sort of, anyway. You've probably heard of Horton Here's a Who. It's the old Dr. Seuss tale. But what about Horton's on a shoe? Well, there it is. That's Oregon head baseball coach George Horton on the bottom of the Ducks' cleats. It's the brainchild of two of his players. They're pretty quick on their feet. <laughs> Usually when people hear the Fab Four, they think about John, Paul, George, and Ringo, the Beatles. But what about Oregon softball's Fab Four in the freshman class? Samantha, Jessica, Allie, and Kaylin. Their hits keep top of the charts in the Pac-10. It's not even 5 a.m. The sun's not out. It seems like night. It feels like night. But for the Beavers, they can't stay in bed. They have to get up and go inside Gill Coliseum and start sweating it out. They say walk-ons are a shot in the dark. Kevin McShane truly shoots in the dark at 4.50 a.m. There you go. How many ducks do we have? One, two. That's right. Two duckies. From play calls to play doh. Push. Bubble screens to simply blowing bubbles. Mark Asper says family life is the way to go. Whoa, Michaela. I get in trouble all during fall camp because I come home. And I want to play with the kids, and they're, they're, in, their, they're in their jammies, and they're getting ready to go to bed. Mark and his wife, Michelle, have been married for nearly four years. First came now two-year-old Michaela Raylene, and just eight months ago, this butterball, Macy Lova. I want him to be as girly and frilly and dainty as can be. All of this joy was delivered upon the Idaho Falls native after a two-year mission trip to Spain. If she'd have met me or known me before I went on my mission, we probably wouldn't have ended up together because I was... I was kind of a, I was pretty arrogant and kind of a snot. Catch us, someone. Catch us. Can't. Oh, don't have soft hands. <laughs> Got lineman hands. Up until this season, the Aspers felt like they spent every waking hour away from the field and campus fixing toilets and replacing light bulbs. Hearts? Oh my gosh, do we need to go back there? After three years of being an on-site assistant manager at a 207-unit apartment complex in Eugene, Mark and Michelle had enough. Got it. They'd call like Sunday morning, hey, sorry, my, my oven exploded on Friday night, but I knew Mark was gone. Now without a job, the minimal living stipend Asper gets from his scholarship each month is harder to stretch between four different plates on the dinner table. Already? We pinched the pennies. Relying on his summer savings as a compliance officer for Lane County Parks and Rec, his giving siblings and parents, and some help from local and government programs, the Aspers are making it work. There's a lot of programs around that help people out that are, you know, <laughs> low to no income like us. Depending on how this football thing pans out, Mark could fall back on his master's degree in educational methodology that he is currently trying to obtain. I'll help you. Do you where, what do you need help with? The balls. They're stuck on the, in there. They're stuck behind the couch because you threw them all behind the couch? 
Yeah. <laughs> For the Aspers, a solid foundation begins at home. Hey. Get him ready for football. In Eugene, Nick Krupke, KVAL Sports. <laughs> After taking last weekend's series with Utah, two games to one, Oregon went on the road and dropped a pair of non-conference contest at Texas State. The Ducks back at home this weekend take on Arizona State. No umbrellas needed in game one of the doubleheader washed out yesterday with the Devils. Pitching defense ruled the day. Top of four, no score. Two on. Avery's grounds one there, but Aaron Payne, the diving flip to AJJ Ulta Belly for the out. Top of five, Nathaniel Cowsey with the slicing drive to left, but Brent Thomas earns those grass stains. If it was real grass, it's not synthetic. Remains scoreless after five. Bottom of six. Look at Aaron Jones, the sophomore going high and deep. If it's fair, it's gone. And Jones, he got it. One nothing, his third homer on the campaign. Full feature with him coming up on Thursday on KVAL at six. Meantime, Alex Cadell held the Sun Devils. Just four hits. He went the distance. His first complete game shutout, striking out two to pick up his third win. Going just three batters over the minimum as Oregon ends a three-game slide. One zip, the final in game one at PK. Game two, Kyle Garlick became the first duck since the program returned in 09. Hit two homers in one game, doubling his home run total this year. They won 3-1. Jake Reed went seven and a third scoreless for the win. It's Oregon's first ever series victory over ASU. They go for that sweep tomorrow at noon. And after dropping 203 last weekend against number five Arizona, the Beavers couldn't wait to get back in the diamond. But Tuesday's game with Portland rained out. So two was last night with Washington. So the Dogs and Beavs played two today. Game one, we go. First inning, one on for Robert Peel. He double the right. Jace Ray would come all the way around from second as the Huskies take the early one nothing edge. Same score in the fourth. Two on for Dylan Davis. The Bash brother coming through. A little dribbler pass short. Tyler Smith scores and ties it up at one. We go to extra zone in the tenth. Runners at the corners for UW. And the squeeze is on. Matt Boyd bouncing off the bump. Took the flip of the Jake Rodriguez, but Caleb Lamb, bah, he's safe. The Huskies would add another go up 3-1. Back here the Beavs, though, bottom of 10. Smith chopping one to second. Just enough to get Ryan Gordon, makes it 3-2. So the tie and run now, 90 feet away. The other fast brother, Michael Conforto. Can't get it done, though. Flies out to left center. The comeback falls short. 3 2 in 10. The Beavs, though, came back with a vengeance in game two. 15 hits, a 9 0 win. Conforto was fifth bomb of the year. Ryan Dunn went long as well. The series up for grabs tomorrow at a 1. She often leads the Ducks with kills on the court. But Elena Bergsma also has looks to kill. I think I'm more nervous before matches. <laughs> just because it's kind of like, you know, I'm not expected to do anything. I'm just going to show up, give it my best. Back in April, the junior from Chandler, Arizona was crowned Miss Lane County USA. But none of her teammates even knew about it. Just how I wanted it. <laughs> now the cat is out of the bag that Elena's on the catwalk. I do get teased about it some, but it's expected. It's very opposite of volleyball, and I think that's partly why I like it. Bergsman never thought of being a beauty pageant contestant before until her old high school teammate, Kelsey Moore, who plays at Texas El Paso, won Miss Texas. Now the Ducks outside hitter and serving specialist is preparing to compete against 27 other girls for Miss Oregon USA in November. I have a list of 300 questions that I've been running through with people. Some of the questions, normally your on-stage interview question is a very controversial question. Um, anywhere from medical marijuana to your views on foreign investments in the states. From ponytails and sneakers to cocktail dresses and heels, Elena can pull off both looks well. I know I'm 6'3". I wear heels out a lot. I like being tall. Um, I like to almost own being tall. And if she wins Miss Oregon USA, the Arizona native will represent the green and yellow. I feel like an Oregonian now, just because being a duck, I mean, we have great fans, and I feel like being a duck is always gonna be with me, and I feel like I'm part of Oregon now. In Eugene, Nick Krupke. It's my pageant wave. <laughs> KVAL Sports.